Okay, so now we are looking at homogeneous systems, which is on page 11 in the systems of linear equation section. So homogeneous system, it's going to be a kind of system of linear equation. Okay, so homogeneous systems. Okay, so we call a system of linear equation, we call a system of linear equations homogeneous if it has the form ax equals 0, i.e., so that's a zero vector, that's a vector x, that's a matrix A, i.e. the vector x is transformed by A to the zero vector. Okay, and there's a fact. All homogeneous systems are consistent. So that means all homogeneous systems have at least one solution. Why? Because all homogeneous systems are solved by x equals zero. This is sometimes called the trivial solution. Okay, because it's uh, boring, trivial, easy to find, right? Of course, if you go matrix A, times the zero vector, you'll always end up getting the zero vector. So x equals zero is always a solution to the homogeneous system. Okay. Now, if x and y are two solutions to a homogeneous system, then every linear combination of x and y is also a solution to that homogeneous system. Okay. Let, why? Because let x and y be solutions to a homogeneous system, i.e. ax equals zero and ay equals zero, then now we take a linear combination, alpha x plus beta y, of the two solutions, x and y, and then we go a times, the f a times this whole thing. So a times alpha x plus beta y, a times the, the, the linear combination. Now, because of the way matrix multiplication works, right, because matrix multiplication is linear, because matrix multiplication always represents a linear transformation, the sum of these two vectors transformed by A or multiplied by A is just those each vector individually multiplied by A, transformed by A, then added together afterwards. The A preserves or respects the addition. That's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is that you're allowed to bring the plus outside of the A, right? So you do that, okay. Then you use the, you use the fact that A is linear again, right? Because linear means it respects addition, but also scalar multiplication. So we have a scalar alpha multiplied by the vector x. We can bring the alpha out the front of that thing. We can bring the beta out the front of that thing. Okay. Then we know, we've assumed, that, a, that x is a solution to the homogeneous system, right? So that, i.e., that ax equals 0. So we replace that ax with 0. Similarly, we've assumed that ay equals 0. So we replace that ay with 0. Now we have alpha zero plus beta zero, but alpha times any zero vector is just a zero vector. Beta times any zero vector is just a zero vector. When you add two zero vectors to the, each other, you just get the zero vector again. So this whole, uh, this whole argument just shows that if you put this, plug this in to the equation a times a vector equals zero, it satisfies the equation. a times this vector, this linear combination, does equal zero. So that proves that Every linear combination of x and y, because this is any linear combination of x and y, is a solution to the homogeneous system. So, if you have this means that if you have two homogeneous solutions already, you can generate infinitely many more by just taking linear combinations. In fact, if you just have even if you just have one homogeneous solution, you can generate, generate infinitely many more because you could, for example, you could multiply that solution by a scalar and there would still be a solution. You could multiply by any scalar, and it would still be a solution, right? Okay. I mean, this uh, argument is actually, this argument here, it's actually, you can sort of be split into two separate parts, right? One part of it is about scalar multiplication, the other bit's about linear transformations. So I could say that really this is equivalent to saying, on the one hand, you can add two different solutions to each other, and the result is still a solution, right, because of that, or you can multiply a solution by alpha, and the result is still a solution because of that, right? But that's, those two arguments are put into one in this thing, where we take, a linear com we take this linear combination. Okay. I suppose the only other thing to say is that 
here, we they said every linear, yes, every linear combination of x and y. Okay. Now, if a homogeneous, next slide, if a homogeneous system has at least one non-trivial solution, it has an infinite number of non-trivial solutions. Oh, that's what we've just said, right? Because, and here they're going through the argument, right? You can take that x, you can multiply it by any scalar alpha x, and the result is still a solution, because look, the, we've already done that argument. Okay. Now we have a definition. The null space, or the kernel, two names for the same thing, null space, kernel, of a matrix A is the set, null space of A, you can also call it kernel of A, so you'd write, you could write kernel of A. Choose whichever one you prefer. I prefer kernel, but in this course it's typical to use null space. What is it? The kernel, the null space or kernel, it's all those vectors x such that ax equals zero. So it's all the solutions to the homogeneous system ax equals zero. It's all those vectors x which a sends to zero. Now if a was, was just a number, um, like suppose a was a number and it wasn't zero, like it was three, then there would only be one thing that it would send to zero, right? It would send the numbers, only the number zero would go to zero, so the null space would just have to zero in it. But in general, a matrix could send many different vectors to the zero vector. Now, they given us, actually, they gave us an example of this. So consider the matrix P, and I think the P will probably stand for projection, but we'll see that now. Consider the matrix P, oh yes, which projects onto the x-axis. This matrix, one, zero, 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 it projects onto the x-axis, right? How do I know it does that? Because you do one, if you do one, zero, 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 times by some x, y, okay? So maybe this is your, that's your point x, y. Then when you times that out, you get just x, zero, okay? That's that point there, x, zero. It projects onto the, onto the x-axis. So a projection means that this thing of bringing it down at a right angle, okay? Or bringing it up, collapsing it at a right angle to the way of what you're projecting it into. Okay, so now we want to know what the null space is. So geometrically, you can see that the null space will be this red, will be um, this red line, right? All the y-axis, because it's everything on the y-axis that is sent down to the origin, right? To the zero vector, in other words. Whereas if you're not on the y-axis, if you're off the y-axis, you're sent down to something that's not, you're sent down to something that's not on the origin, something that's not zero. So uh, the null space is everything on the y-axis to so everything of the form zero or one will multiplied by a scalar, right? Any point on the, on the y-axis, because those are the things that are the only things that are sent to the origin. Um, and I think that's all we can do in homogeneous systems in the next video.